Hello everyone, welcome to Scorcher Toys at Anymoon.com's review of Yamato's V2 VF1S No Paint version. This toy was released in December 2009 as a Yamato web shop exclusive. It retailed for 8,295 yen. It is a normal release, so inside the box you got the four TV style missiles, the four sets of Do You Remember Love style missiles, two fixed post hands, a pilot figure, two sets of launch arm display stand adapters. The launch arm was sold separately. You get a nose cone holder for the removable nose cone gimmick. Underneath the tray, you receive instructions, stickers, and on this release, water slide decals, and that's what makes it really different from previous releases. Obviously, there's no paint on the toy. You could use those water slides or the stickers to make this into whatever toy you prefer. Now, why would anyone ever do this or buy this? In Japan, there's a long tradition of toy manufacturers trying to appeal to modelers, who are typically a little bit older audience, by showing how customizable their toys are. And this is obviously sort of the ultimate example of that. Now, this isn't where Yamato stopped. Yamato kept going. And in March of 2010, they made an unassembled VF1S kit available for 6,090 yen. They would make several more unassembled kits after that. In November 2011, they released a VF1A, VF1J, and VF1S unassembled kits. This time they threw in option parts. And in the VF1J, they even included the baby pod that had previously only been available through T-Rex at Wonderfest. Now, why they didn't just create one kit that had all three heads, that's a, that's a little weird. Uh, the final unassembled kit came out in May of 2012. That was a VF1D, and that was 7,140 yen. Now, it's worth noting that the unassembled kits do not come with stickers. They are meant more for pure modelers with a little higher skill level, so they only have water slide decals. So, if you want to put together an assembly kit, you're going to need snips. You're going to need painting equipment. And you are going to need a lot of patience because as I understand it, this is a pretty difficult thing to assemble. Lots and lots of different parts where it gets particularly tricky from what I understand. I haven't actually built one myself. So there's a lot of pins and screws here that are very similar in sky size. And so if you mess that up, you're going to have to step backwards a few steps. And that can be very difficult with how tight everything comes together. Now, if you want a whole bunch of different paint schemes that you can think of in your imagination but would never be made as toys by Yamato or now Arcadia. This was your chance, but you're gonna have to pay for it in some sweat equity. Okay, so maybe now you're thinking, all right, I like the notion of doing my own paint scheme, but I do not like the notion of having to build my own toy. And that again brings us back to the VF1S no paint version. This toy obviously comes assembled. It is simply a Yamato V2 toy without paint applied. So you have the opening canopy, the removable pilot figure who is now completely devoid of paint, as is the toy itself. You don't even get the paint apps on the backs of the missiles. That would be white on a normal release. So this thing is completely devoid of paint but it does have all of the normal goodness of a Yamato V2 toy, including the integrated landing gears, the rubber wheels, the articulated tow bar. You'll notice that things that you usually see color on, like the clear bits on the front of the landing gear doors, are also completely clear here because that's actually paint that's applied to the back of those. Even though it's translucent, that's painted. And so on this toy, it is not. So you have complete flexibility to paint this toy however you like. Now, the downside is some of that painting might make you want to remove parts of the toy, which gets you back to that assembly version. It might actually behoove you to get the assembly version because the toy is already disassembled, which means you could paint it earlier in the process and have a little bit more flexibility where the toy, when it's already completely built, is gonna be pretty tricky to paint if you're gonna to wanna to have it transition between the various modes. Now, uh, you might be looking at the color of white. Uh, mine 
looks, mine's obviously, it's released in 2009. Mine's getting a little older. Uh, the white might look a little dim in certain lights. If you had an Arcadia release, this is the premium finish Fokker, you could see it is a much brighter white toy over here. Uh, obviously it has all the markings on it. It's a premium finish toy. Uh, but that's what you're up against from a white perspective. A sort of creamy white over here and a more brilliant white with these newer Arcadia releases. And I mentioned the missiles before. So there's no paint on the back of this missile. There is paint on the back of the Arcadia Premium Finish version. So you can see that's what the other missile bays would look like. So you can paint those. If you don't like the idea of the missiles being white, you can make them green, blue, or purple, whatever you want. Here is also the missiles, the TV missiles. You can see there's a black stripe, a little black end to them. Again, make it whatever color you want on your no paint version. That's totally up to you. Let's talk color and versions for a moment here. The original Yamato V2 VF1S Fokker toy, Do You Remember Love Style, had a Do You Remember Love Style pilot figure. You can see he's got the bigger shoulders, the pointier helmet, and gray paint scheme. It was molded in gray plastic. Underneath, we can also see it's got this crotch mechanism, it has a thin piece right here. It really just meant that you were threading the hip bar through a little bit more than you were on later releases. And you've got that beautiful rainbow canopy, which proved to be a Q QC issue. Uh, a lot of those wrinkled over time. So by the time we get to the no paint version, the rainbow canopy is now out of favor. The no paint version you could see is the brilliant white, which meant TV release. You could also see the pilot figure inside there has a rounded helmet and no big shoulders. So it's a TV style pilot figure. Oddly, the fixed posed hands that come with the toy are do you remember love style fixed posed hands. And also the decals that come with the toy are make it easiest to create a do you remember love paint scheme. So a little bit of a mismatch there. You still had the early crotch mechanism on the no paint version. The unassembled kits, uh, I believe the, the first VF1S unassembled kit has the early crotch mechanism. By 2011, they had upgraded to the newer crotch mechanism, which you can see here on the TV release. Fatter piece up front. It just makes the hips swing in and out a little bit easier. Again, no real uh, change in effectiveness there. This is the TV VF1S release. You could see the pilot figure is Fokker with the rounded helmet. So that is this release. Again, bright white TV release, gray, do you remember love release, and the no paint version somewhat in between. It's, it's bright white, but it seems like it should have been a do you remember love release. So kind of questionable there. Again, Pilot tells you it's definitely a TV release, but not really sure why. And then we get to this Arcadia release, and Arcadia said, you know what? Everything is brilliant white. There is no difference between TV and Do You Remember Love, which is a great decision. Yamato should have made that same decision, and, and this basically is lessons learned from Yamato. Arcadia, of course, also keeping that fatter crotch lock mechanism, which was more user-friendly. So there are your different versions and some thoughts on the colors. Let's go ahead and continue on to Gearwalk mode. For those of you not familiar with the Yamato V2 toy, this is the gun. You saw I had it underneath in fighter mode. It pegs in. I kept bumping into it, but it is pretty secure. It extends for Gearwalk and Batroid modes, and the grip comes down like so. You see there's a slot in the grip handle. There is a little peg in the hand. You just kind of weave it through here. Whoops. And it will peg right in. Let's get that in there. And you're going to bring in your trigger finger, bring that down. Uh, uh, obviously all this stuff would be a little bit easier if you didn't have a camera in front of your face, but there you go. That's what it looks like holding the gun and it holds the gun pretty well. So that's good news. The TV style missiles actually disassemble. So if you're a diorama builder, that's pretty cool. You can peg them in. And then when you put them on the wing, there is a little bit of a twist mechanism to them. And so you're just going to bring it in and then twist it out. And that's how you get it in that position you want. And then you're gonna twist it back and kind of pull from the back down to free it up. So once it's on there, since it twisted on there, it's in there pretty good. 
Now you can see the toy looks great in gear walk mode. It does achieve a nice good angled forward leg sweep. Uh, and that's because it has like a little extension that gets it a little further down as you transform it. That's pretty cool. It does have the swivel at the knee that lets you get the really wide stance and those feet, obviously nice clickety ratches hold in place at a pretty extreme angle. So that's good. You can see this little fin here folds over. That's for use with the GBP accessory that was obviously sold separately. So there you go. This is gear walk mode. It handles it very well. You can get some pretty good poses for uh, a gear walk mode toy. Uh, holds together very well. Nothing but good things to say, really. Let's keep going on to Batroid. And finally, we get to Batroid mode. And the only big complaint I have about Yamato V2 toys, and now the Arcadia toys, is this collar right here. So you have this chest that comes up to here. And theoretically, the neck should be right above the, this piece right here. But instead, we have the back of the nose cone right above it, and then the neck. And so it positions the whole head a little bit higher uh, than it's supposed to be in the show, which is really the only big complaint. Otherwise, everything here very attractive, holds together incredibly well. Now, the no paint version doesn't come with the option parts that later toys did that kind of concealed the big gap on the side here or concealed the big hole behind the head. And you can uh, press this piece in to kind of conceal a little bit of it. Um, so those are your big flaws that were addressed with later uh, optional pieces. You can fill those gaps in, but even with without those filler pieces, it's a very handsome looking Batroid mode. And articulation is great. So you've got these arms that spin around. Now, I haven't mentioned it, but the very first releases of this toy did have shoulder pins that cracked and the whole shoulder would fall off. Check out anymoon.com. I've got a full list of every Yamato V2 release and which ones were prone to having those breakages. Anyways, that is a ball joint. So you can rock and you've got the hinge it rocks on. So lots of good arm articulation there. This shoulder piece kind of rotates out of the way too. So whatever you're trying to do, it's not going to inhibit the motion. There's a twist point underneath the shoulder, and then you have a double jointed elbow, which is nice. And they're nice stiff joints too. Now the hands are uh, removable and they fit with a peg. And here is the fixed posed hand that comes with this toy. And again, it's a do you remember love version for the no paint version, which doesn't make a ton of sense, but there it goes. On the other hand, I'll do it too. You got your gun like so. And there you go. So now he's got the fixed posed hands on. And you can see mine, the fixed posed hands are a little bit brighter white than the rest of the toy. So that might be uh, because of whatever plastic was used on the toy versus the hands. Moving down, you can see we've got the ability to bring the hips out, which was a pretty huge improvement that we saw Yamato working on diligently from their very first 160 toy. Moving down, we can go out, but you can see you're going to run into those wings. And I just did that. So let's push everything back together here. You would instead use your gear walk joint right there so that you've got that optionality. You've got that twist you saw at the knee. You can come back, but you can also engage the extension to get a little bit further back. Once you do that, if you, you're going to have to close it up again and then going down to the feet, you have the ability to extend the feet like you saw in gear walk mode. There is no real uh, bring them in and out. So that might be a little bit restrictive for you. And the head also not a ball joint, uh, twists all the way around. It can look up and down and that it pivots on the neck as well. So lots of good uh, articulation. You can get the toy into the poses you like. This little hook you might've seen there, that's for use with the super parts, but really it's gratuitous, never really needed it. So there you go. Overall, Batroid mode is a lot of fun and it's very handsome, holds together well. There is a reason why these Yamato V2 toys have been the pinnacle of VF1 collecting since 2008. You know, it's a, it's a really good toy. All right, so that's it. Now you know all about the no paint version. Hopefully you know a lot about the assembled or the assembly kits as well, even though I haven't obviously showing you how to do that. You can see this toy, not a whole lot of metal. So for those of you who don't know, this is a light toy. Any metal bits are interior. 
uh, and for the most part, it serves the toy well, but you should be aware of that if you, you're hunting down your first Yamato V2 right now. It's not going to feel chunky. It's not going to feel heavy when you hold it, uh, but it's still a superb rendition of the VF1, and I highly recommend it. Check out my article on anymoon.com, and as always, thanks for watching.